This program is brought to you by friends and partners of Shaiju Matthew and Revive Nations. God, what is your opinion about this chaos that is surrounding me? And the way you find out is by starting by leaning in to hear. I want to know God's opinion. See, we were not taught that. We were taught to what is the blanket check of Christians. Pray, just pray, just pray. Everything will be alright. Just pray. No, 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 don't pray. I'm not teaching you to pray now. We'll talk about prayer later. Now I'm talking about having a communication with God. You are, you are still eating that food in the kitchen and you are asking the question, God, I want to know your thought. I want to know what are you thinking? I want to know what is your position about the situation in my life? I want to know. You have to ask that question until you trouble the Lord for His answer. Have a little one that you desire to see grow in the things of God? Subscribe to Revive Nations Kids on YouTube for an exciting array of programs every week. ReviveNations.tv is now open to live participation to our services. You have to ask that question so often until God now sends an angel from heaven and the angel of the Lord comes to you in person saying that he's going to use you to be a deliverer and you're like, no, 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 that's not my question. My question is, if God is with us, why is this happening to us? Christians are so... <laughs> I am on Oshiantana. We, let's, let me put it this way. We, I'm putting myself in so you don't feel bad, okay? We are so lightweight sometimes that we ask the Lord for something but we don't wait for His answer and we've already moved on. The number of times I've asked somebody to define what they want and they didn't even know what they want. The number of times I've asked them, define what you want. Tell me exactly what you want. Oh, I need a breakthrough. Breakthrough in what? Breakthrough in what? I was talking to somebody. Came to me, they need a, a, a breakthrough in their finances. I said, okay, all right, let's talk about that. I said, what does the Bible say about it? What does the Bible say? So the person said, yeah, yeah, I, I don't know, just I think pray and fast. I said, okay, no problem. I said, thank you. I'm not challenging you, but I would like to know where you found that in the Bible. That in order for you to receive financial breakthrough, you had to pray and fast. Are you getting what I'm saying? So this person went to find that verse, didn't find it. So they came back and said, I couldn't find an exact verse like that but you know for all breakthrough aren't we supposed to pray and fast I said no 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 aren't we supposed to is no more the answer I need you to find it in the scripture so that way you can go to God and say it is written I cannot put God to test if he didn't write it explicitly I can't assume him hey this God is too detailed you're going to assume things with this God I thought no 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 why did you think? He is not responsible for what you think. He is responsible for what he has written. So I came back and said, Oh, the Bible says, Delight in the Lord. So they found the verse. 
delight in the Lord and he'll give you all the desires of your heart so I said good so the Bible says delight in the Lord so I said if the Bible says delight in the Lord why are you praying for this breakthrough if you're praying for the breakthrough you're not delighting in the Lord no 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 but I want to take this to the Lord I said okay no problem you're also saying that I'm not coming to the Lord because I delight in him I'm coming to the Lord because I have a problem I said that's not a problem <laughs> it's not a problem to go to the Lord when you have a problem but I need a verse for it okay let's go let's study I'm not saying that she, that person was wrong or you are right no 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 I'm just saying no what you're doing and why you're doing it if you're saying delight in the lord i said then technically then you're not supposed to be praying for a breakthrough you're supposed to enjoy the lord and as you begin to take delight in the lord everything in your life is supposed to solve by itself the verse works then the question is why didn't it work for you I think I'm already teaching on investigation. Because I am somebody who delights in God, yet it is not working for me. So then there must be another part that I'm missing. That I did delight. But there was something that was still missing. And let's not go too far. I, I'll talk about investigation another time. So the manner in which you start probing is by number one, you incline your ear to you start by asking the correct questions we have pampered our children okay there's a rule in in our house if you can ask them they, my children will tell you the rule is crying gets you nothing because your dada and mama shall absolutely not be manipulated by your tantrums okay I've seen these kids in the malls. <laughs> Recently, I was seeing a, a video of a mother at the airport. The child is not moving, but she has to catch the flight. So she was literally dragging her child in the airport. We've been brought up pampered. So we expect God to pamper us. So we are like crying and storming and oh, nah, nah. and the Lord is just calmly ignoring us. Can I show you that? Look at the blind beggar. Do you remember the blind beggar in the Bible? What was his name? Bartimaeus. Okay? The blind beggar, he hears about Jesus passing by. And the only thing he's learned from his childhood as a blind man, as a blind beggar, his identity is what? A beggar. So the only thing he knows is to beg. <laughs> okay, I'm going to trouble some of your theologies. Welcome to the Rock the Boat Ministries. <laughs> so Jesus, the son of the living God, the most compassionate of the one, the high priest, the sympathizers with all our weaknesses, ah, to whom we can come confidently to the throne room of grace is passing by. the brother hears about it so he does what he best knows how to do and what is that beg and he starts begging jesus son of david he's screaming his throat out have mercy on me mercy he's asking for mercy hey he just read that you'll get sure mercies of david and he's using david's name But the way to receive the sure mercies of David had to be learned. And he's using the right words. He's saying, Son of David, have mercy on me. Yet, he's not receiving what? I don't know about you. I got stuck in this verse. I said, God, you have to help me understand so I can teach your children. So if you're learning with me, let me hear a loud Amen. amen. So, so then immediately we know we're doing something wrong. 
why because the way we pursue god we learn from broken people we learn through our childhood perspectives it has to change today when this guy was screaming like that what did jesus do uh, look chapter 18 if you are interested around 39 you will see jesus completely ignored the man he cried out but jesus passed by the man look at the number of times how many times in the bible jesus passes by somebody you know you've heard pastors say jesus will never pass you by wrong theology brother i'll show you at least three times when jesus was going to pass somebody by i said actually i can show you four times in the scriptures where jesus intentionally passed by someone and didn't help them if i dig i can find you more than four that is troubling it has to trouble you because you are otherwise a sitting duck you become a christian that you say oh no 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 the lord loves me the lord loves me the lord loves you that's why he died for you <laughs> he doesn't have to do anything anymore <sighs> did you hear what i said oh the lord loves you no 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 the lord loves you full stop he died for you on the cross full stop he doesn't need to do anything anymore he's finished everything on the cross everything else that you receive that you have to learn to use the key salvation is done hallelujah but salvation after salvation aren't you suffering after salvation aren't you sick after salvation why is it that you're financially still broke after salvation ah you're not you're too quiet for me i talk to me is this is this is this provoking someone to go? Jesus passed by the guy who was quoting a verse but not using the principle and then Jesus being compassionate he said he's not getting it he's not getting it so he stops and says bring him because Jesus does not like people abusing anybody so Jesus seeing that others are now abusing him saying keep quiet so the lord jesus now tells him bring him to me but not because he used the correct method so why did jesus ignore him in the first place so that sometime down the line there will be intelligent believers like us that will read that chapter and say wait a minute jesus was not moved by that screaming So it wasn't the screaming that got Jesus' attention. Yet, now please, take things in context. Yet in the Old Testament, the Bible talks about shouts that brought them breakthrough. So there is a screaming that brings breakthrough. <laughs> Yet this screaming didn't bring breakthrough. What is the difference? That's the other screaming came out of understanding. this screaming came out of fear the fear of losing out may the lord change our perspective okay going back to what i first started teaching kings and priests who are we we are kings and priests do you remember that okay so that means a king responds to kingdom king responds to kingdom you don't listen 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 hear me carefully church hear me carefully you don't want god to treat you out of sympathy yes he sympathizes with us but that's not what we are looking for we are not looking for sympathy we are looking for him to say well done yes amen not oh she's not getting it okay anyway call her No 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 we don't want that. I want to get it Lord. Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. 
So what happens if I keep giving you sympathy, I keep helping you all the time? I'm helping you because you're not getting it. I keep helping you with sympathy, sympathy, sympathy. Will you ever grow? You will be one of those cranky people, 50, 60 year old. Ah, yeah, yeah. They were still acting like kids. Their body grew. <laughs> Have you heard of that? They are the ones that the, their own children, forgive me for saying this, their own children will put them in some nursing home. I can't handle my mother. I can't handle her. Because she became aged in her body not in her mind. She didn't grow in her mind. Are you following what I'm saying? We must change. Look at somebody and say, we must change. Yes, yes, this word is coming to you. God is saying, I am in the same room. But until you learn the art of inclining your ear, you couldn't miss the voice and you were in the same room. Oh, Rando Manasya. Somebody say, Lord, don't let that be. Because Incline your ear is an instruction to the body. Come unto me is an instruction to the heart. Uh, and the third part, here is a command to your spirit. Okay, let me help somebody before there is the wrong theology that is going to run out. God rarely speaks to your audible ears. Rarely. I can assure you, if not 90% or more, everything that you saw in the book of Revelation, it didn't necessarily was seen or heard by the physical ears of John wasn't heard in the physical ears of John he was taken in the spirit that is why people could sense something was happening but they couldn't see him they couldn't hear because when God speaks it's not this ear that is hearing it is the your conscience that is hearing ah Okay, so let's break that verse one more time. Incline your ear is a command to what? Your body, your body, your body. Okay, let's break that down. Body, there's so much happening in your house, so much happening. The bank is saying this, the bank is, the doctor is saying this. Shh, shh, shh. Turn that noise down and sit down on your sofa and shh. That's you doing what? Yeah, you're positioning yourself to ask the right questions and to hear God. Oh, my husband did that. My husband did this. My husband said, relax. Calm down. Your spirituality is not connected to your, your spouse. Your spirituality, you are responsible for it. So in the midst of chaos, what does God want you want to do? He wants you to and lean into his heart to hear because he still has an opinion to what is happening currently in your life. Find that, find that, find that. Okay, number one, instruction to the body. Are you with me or not? Because if you're not, we can close soon. Okay, talk to me. Incline to your ear is an instruction to your body. Number two, come unto me is an instruction to what? Your heart. Meaning, when you sit down on that sofa in your house, all around confusion and your mind, your heart, everything is like a, 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 a commotion. While you sit there, you need to train your heart to go back to the Lord. How do you do that? You begin to repent. You close your eyes. Oh, maybe you're cooking. Okay, don't close your eyes while cooking and then your husband is going to be more mad. You can't blame the Lord. Oh, I was praying. No, 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 no. Who asked you to pray with the eyes closed in the kitchen? <laughs> while you're stirring, you begin to talk to the Lord. Lord, 
my heart i'm coming to you how do you bring the heart to the lord how do you bring the heart to the lord what is the way by repentance in order for god to say come to me that means your heart was not near him that means you need to repent of where your heart was so when there is chaos you first incline your ear by positioning yourself and then you look at the state of your heart how far is my heart from the lord and then you need to start saying wait a minute when all that chaos happened i didn't have a prayer life i didn't pray it's been 8 days i have not prayed i eight days i have not prayed eight days the last i prayed was the 14th the last time i picked up the bible was the 20th ah, yet i'm saying god 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 why is this happening to me because i am far from the lord ish lord says come unto me and then you begin to repent you begin to say lord if there is a chaos in my life that is not your fault the grace of god shifted on job's life when god testified yet in all this job did not wrong god my people that god has sent for me to feed i want this to be god's testimony about you that no matter what happens around you you can still with all your heart say blessed be the name of the lord he is a just god he is a righteous god and if you're hearing this word he is about to bring you out of the pit in the mighty name of jesus sometimes our pursuit is so weak our, uh, we don't pay a price we just expect the voice of god to just come to us but we have not pursued him enough we're shifting this season in jesus name here here and your soul shall live everybody say if i can hear what god is saying in this season then i shall live So your living is dependent upon what? Your living is dependent on what? A capacity to hear. And if you're part of this ministry right now, this is a requirement now that as a husband, as a wife, you need to ask the question, what is God saying about it? Please, please don't you have to avoid the uh, the 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 The, the kind of answers that are very shallow shallow oh god says he call unto me and he will answer that you learned in sunday school i'm not talking about that there is a now word god is speaking are you able to hear right now god is speaking to some of you right now as you are hearing me god is speaking can you make that observation can you connect the dots that this is not a simple message god is saying son daughter too long you've been in the dark too long you've been in the dark because you've not paid attention to what i was saying because if you hear what i am saying there must be life flowing through you so if there is no life and life in abundance it's somewhere because you stopped hearing ta ko banasia I release life in abundance to you. Amen. At home in the name of Jesus shout an amen. amen. I need to know. I need this week all of this week I need you to trouble the Lord. Lord, I need to know. I need to know. Zana baba basia. I love you Lord. What happens when you hear God? Three things. Number 1, you will live two he will make covenants three show mercy i see fire burning in many houses right now 
many homes right now there is a fire that is burning kore antana mama sakata the spirit of the lord is touching you years years of loss is coming to an end says the lord zena mama was the antana i see something painful that happened with your father i want to declare over you that will not happen to you in the name of jesus the spirit of the lord is removing that generational curse i see a fire that was burning generationally there is a limitation that is burning but demonic fire is going to stop and spiritual fire is going to take over renta mama there is a fire of the enemy that causes loss eating 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 from one side eating health eating everything but in the name of jesus i'm declaring over you the season of shame is over i introduce you to a new chapter of honor hara baba baba sakana na mama sia Hello hello welcome to Revive Nations with Shaiju Matthew I know that you have been blessed and elevated by God through this word and I believe in the days to come you're going to hear about God's hand that is upon your life and we look forward to celebrating with you If you haven't already would you take a minute and join us on our social media platforms follow comment and subscribe and share this post with your friends and family Thank you again for your partnership with us. If you desire to support our ministry, you can do so by visiting revivenations.org/give. Your generosity is really helping us to reach someone somewhere new every day. So may the Lord see it and bless you. Until next time, God bless you and shalom. Many of us love Jesus by our words, Facebook posts and scripture quotes. But when God wanted to show us how much he loved us, he gave up his only begotten son. He is not looking for part-time Christians nor a portion of surrender or a fraction of obedience. He is asking us for everything. And Jesus is the only person who has the right to ask us for everything because he gave us everything. Distance is not a barrier to God. Revivenations.tv is now open to live participation to our services. 